Hello there and welcome back to another one of my quick vids. Now on Saturday um, I said I was going on a retro road trip. Um, I was hoping to upload a video yesterday, it got really late. Um, so I've had to hold off, I'm shooting this on Monday night. Um, so bear with me. Um, I'd just like to quickly thank um, Ricky, Murat, Andy and Paul, Martin and Stephen um, who have all got in touch uh, either through the Facebook page or here on YouTube to offer their support. Um, there's a little bit of banter going on on the, on the Facebook page as well as to, as to what it is that I've picked up. So with no further ado I will show you good people what I've picked up. So here we go. And there she is. That, dear people, um, is a Research Machines, or, or RM, um, Link 480Z. And this was the very first computer I used, even before my Commodore VIC-20. Um, the very, very first computer I used um, in my primary school. I think I was possibly eight or nine. Um, I'm desperately trying to think of how, when that would be. Um, these were introduced in 1982. They were drawn from service in 1985, or at least sale in 1985. Um, so quite a short lifespan. Um, not uncommon for a micro of the era. Um, but this, this, not this one. <laughs> But this was the very first model computer I, I ever used um, and it's and I described it on Saturday as being um, somewhat of a unicorn computer because you you don't see them you never see them for sale or at least I, I haven't there's very little information out there about them um, there are some schematics online I think you can I think you can find the manuals I think I've already downloaded them um, but yeah, as far as computers go, um, these are a little bit like hen's teeth. Um, they're, they're just not out there. But this one was. So I've got huge thanks to say um, to Roger. Uh, just the other side of Birmingham, which is where I picked this up from. So from where I am, based uh, here in not so sunny at the moment because it's too late, Welling Garden City. Um, it's a little bit of a trek, but it was a it was a, it was a good day. It was a, it was a day well spent. So the 480Z um, is based on uh, a Zilog Z80 CPU clocked at 4 MHz. Most of these, um, I believe the early ones came with 32 um, kilobytes of RAM. Um, they also had a solid black steel enclosure. These ones are a little bit later. I'm expecting this to have 64K, possibly up to um, 256 um, by way of expansion boards inside. Um, so yeah. The reason why this is so special to me, like I say, is the very first computer I used. Um, I have ever so fond memories of using this computer um, when I was probably about, like I say, about eight or nine. Um, my primary school teacher at the time, Mr. Hollis, uh, would boot this up. He would put a floppy disk in the in the disk drive. It was a five and a quarter inch. I don't know if it's proprietary or not, or whether whether it's relatively generic um, disk drive that came with this as well. And it just seemed so futuristic it was like completely removed from everything i'd seen before just in my mind completely cutting edge i have one particular fond memory um there was a there was a, a pool game just black and white on this i think that, i think it's i think it's just character graphics i don't think there was a, a graphics mode on these um but you could very easily stop and then list a game um and uh, it, was, it was my very first look at programming. I'm not, I'm not a great programmer at all. Basic is about my programming level and then not the advanced stuff either. But stopping the, stopping the execution of this pool game, listing the contents and working out um, the routine that slowed the ball down um, and literally by zeroing a, a variable, um, you could point, you could point the, you could hit the ball wherever you fancied across the table. I think there were only ever two balls on the table, believe it or not. Um, but yeah, it would literally just bounce around, bounce around until it eventually went in the pocket. How could you lose? Um, but yeah, 
absolutely brilliant memory of that. I don't think there's too much software out there for these. It was pretty much all education, of course. But I'm going to look around and see what's out there, see what I can get. Um, I mentioned disc earlier. It will also support cassette as well. And that's pretty much how I hope to use this. So let's have a look around. She's a, she's a beast. She's absolutely huge. Um, literally like what, a third, a third as wide again um, as, a, as a BBCB. So it, it's, a, it's a big, hefty, built-for-schools, rugged, uh, educational 8-bit micro. Um, so let's, let's have a quick look around. Um, so they go, you can see that the Z key's missing. It's pretty much all there, apart from the keycap. Um, so I'm going to have a look at what I might be able to find about that, see if I can find a replacement. Um, you'll, note, you'll note there that the, uh, that the F key's, only four of them, but neatly nestled. Um, in amongst the cursor control keys. Very nice. Not much to see on the two edges apart from the grot. It needs a really good, needs a really good clean up. A um, little bit of ventilation on the front there. Again, not much to see on the underneath. Little bit of a shame. Perhaps I, I'm guessing because there's a little bit of residue there. I'm guessing that's where the serial number was. I think that's a speaker. I think that's a sort of a speaker grill just there. Let's have a quick look. So I can see something. I don't know how well it'll come out here. Let's have a let's have a quick look. Oh yeah, just about making that out. Wolverhampton Education. There we go. So we don't know what school this would have been in, but uh, but yeah, Wolverhampton Education. So let's have a quick look at what we've got around the back here. So we've got TV out. I believe that is just a regular RF signal. Really hope so. Um, reset, very helpful. Um, RGB. Um, I believe it's composite monitor as well. I think it does support two different things. I need to read the manual. Um, an accessory. Not sure what that is. Cassette port, obviously. Parallel I/O, and I think that was how the disk drive was connected. Can't really remember anymore. Um, so it's serial, a selectable network address as well. No network adapter on this particular one. And then you've got a, a quite a meaty looking metal fan behind there. Massive, huge sort of BBC style um, on off switch and the fuse and then a sort of permanent mains lead there. So that, that is the beast. I think I'm pretty much going to have to reinforce um, the shelf I choose um, to house this one on. So, the gent I bought this off did say that the power light came on, he did say that the fan came on, but he couldn't get a picture out of it. Um, whether that was a tuning issue, whether it's an actual issue, I mean, memory chips, uh, we all know they tend to go bad pretty quick, and depending on what they are, it could be far, far worse. <laughs> um, so, who knows? Who knows? So, let's try and find out now. So let's grab the RF lead, pop it in, make sure our power's off. Stick our TV on. And let's let's flip the switch. So three, two, one, hopefully we don't release any smoke. Well, the fan's on for sure. Ooh, hello. Ooh, dodgy, dodgy connection under there maybe, who knows? But the light, the light came on. Let's see if we can tune something in. <gasps> yes, straight away. Oh my goodness. There we go. Fantastic, look at that. Not a bad picture either, my goodness. Um, wow, pretty surprised I actually booted up. Um, so there we, there we go, version, the, the ROM version 1.2b. Should have to look that up. Start basic in ROM, type the command R. Ah, there we go. RML extended basic in ROM, version 5.4b, copyright 1983. So quite, still quite an early machine. Um, a couple of years before they discontinued them. 
high resolution graphics level. Now that's interesting um, because basically these didn't do high res unless you've got an expansion board inside. So I'm keen to know what's going on in there. That fan sounds like it's struggling. I don't remember these things making a noise, but yeah, wow. Does the Z key work? Yeah, the Z's okay, it's just a key cap. Well, there we go. Let's uh, let's see if we can let's see if we can put in a, a quick uh, quick program. Right, there's our program. Let's run it. See what happens. Yes. Oh, she lives. Oh, it's just going to do a page at a time. Splendid. So I, I definitely remember that being white text on black. But uh, yeah, hopefully with our, either a composite out. Um, and I'm interested that it says RGB on the end on the back of the device, so it obviously must have um, a colour card in. So yeah, how exceedingly interesting. Let's switch off and back on again. Let's see, Let's see if she comes back to life again. Yep, no worries. Absolutely no idea how much RAM's in this, but. Uh, but yeah, you, you couldn't wipe the smile off my face. I'm, I'm pretty amazed that that's just booted straight up. Needs a very good clean, needs a keycap. So if you've, if you've ever heard of one of these and you happen to have a spare um, Z key, then I'll, please get in touch, that'd be great. Um, otherwise I'll, I'll source some, I'll, I'll, I'll figure something out. I'll figure something out. But yeah, starts up first time, tunes in, brilliant. So thank you very much for, for joining me in this is a very quick introduction um, to my new Link um, 480Z. New to me, again. Um, do please look out for future videos where I'll be starting to clean this up, have a look inside, um, figure, out what's in, figure out what's in here, and hopefully learning how to use it too. Because I remember nothing from back in the day, really. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining. Um, and I do look forward to seeing you again in a future video. Stay safe now. Bye.